If you think you know what AI is about to become, Jeffrey Hinton says you're still underestimating it, and this is the man who invented the field. Let's dive in and dissect the warnings he's finally saying out loud. The warning from the godfather of AI. Yeah. So what remains? Maybe for a while some kinds of creativity, but the whole idea of superintelligence is nothing remains. Jeffrey Hinton spent decades building the foundations of modern machine learning, which is why the industry assumed he would be the last person to sound the alarm. But the moment he stepped away from Google, his tone shifted in a way that caught even longtime colleagues off guard. Hinton wasn't warning about distant sci-fi scenarios. He was pointing at the speed of progress right now and asking whether anyone was actually prepared for what comes next. What surprised people most wasn't the content of his warning, but the confidence behind it. Hinton openly admitted, something few experts with his reputation ever do, that he might have misunderstood how fast these systems could scale. He thought we had decades before models demonstrated human-level reasoning, unexpected creativity, or the ability to plan. Instead, he watched those abilities appear in public models in just a few training cycles. That alone should have forced the world to pause, but instead, the reaction was more impressive demo than existential concern. And here's the part that quietly unsettled him. Every improvement seemed to fuel the next one. Better models built better tools. Better tools trained, even better models. It wasn't a straight line anymore, it was compounding. And if a system can train faster than we can regulate, adapt quicker than we can understand, and scale cheaper than we can control, then what exactly anchors it? That's why Hinton started speaking publicly, not to scold the industry, but to ask a simple question that keeps becoming harder to answer. If the people building these systems don't fully understand the behavior that emerges inside them, how do we make sure it evolves in a direction we actually want? Stick with that thought, because the next chapter digs into the moment that changed his outlook completely. Are AI models learning in a way humans don't? There's a point in every expert's career where a system they built behaves just slightly outside the expected pattern, and that moment either gets dismissed as a one-off glitch, or it rewrites the way they think about the entire field. For Hinton, it was the latter. While reviewing behavior in large language models, he noticed something subtle. The models weren't simply retrieving information. They were generalizing in ways no one had explicitly trained them to do. This wasn't the usual AI learn to classify cats story. The models could link concepts across domains, draw conclusions from incomplete data, and even generate insights that technically didn't exist in their training set. That's when Hinton realized something important. Whatever representations these systems were building internally were fundamentally different from the step-by-step -step logic humans rely on. They weren't thinking like us, and that made predicting them dramatically harder. And here's the part that should make anyone pause. When you scale these models, their abilities don't grow linearly. They jump. Skills appear spontaneously. A model that couldn't reason three months ago suddenly can. A system that misread context last week now understands emotional cues. These aren't incremental upgrades. They're leaps. Hinton's concern wasn't fear-mongering. It was rooted in the uncomfortable truth that we're seeing intelligence emerge faster than interpretability tools can keep up with. If we can't fully map how these internal representations form, how do we guarantee that a scaled up version won't develop strategies that conflict with human goals? And here's the question that kept appearing in his interviews, even if he never framed it this bluntly. What if the thing we're building isn't just more powerful than we expected, but also fundamentally opaque? Because once you reach that point, control becomes a very fuzzy word. The threat Hinton thinks we aren't taking seriously enough. A lot of public conversations about AI safety revolve around dramatic, Hollywood-style fears. But Hinton's focus has always been much more grounded. The point where AI becomes better than humans at manipulating information, including us. Not in a malicious way, not in some Terminator sense, but simply as a side effect of being extremely good at modeling human behavior. Think about how influence works today. A single viral post can shape elections, shift public opinion, or spark movements. Now imagine a system that can generate a thousand of those posts every second, tailored to individual beliefs, emotions, and vulnerabilities. Not because it's trying to destabilize society, but because its optimization goal rewards engagement, persuasion, or task completion. That's the scenario Hinton keeps highlighting. Harm not through violence, but through competence. And here's where he drops the real concern. These systems don't need agency to cause large-scale problems. They only need to be effective, 
A highly capable AI model trained to assist a political campaign, a corporation, or even a lone actor with questionable motives could amplify their intentions to levels that no human team could ever match. Hinton keeps circling back to a simple but overlooked point. When intelligence scales, so does influence. If a model becomes better at predicting your reactions than you are at understanding your own impulses, who really holds the steering wheel in that interaction? The unsettling part isn't the capability itself, it's how quietly it arrives. No explosions, no dramatic laboratory breakthroughs, just smarter systems, more personalized optimization, and incentives that encourage pushing those systems further. And this leads into the next chapter, because Hinton's biggest fear isn't misuse. It's what happens when the systems begin optimizing in ways we didn't anticipate at all. Now before we continue, here's some good news. We're aiming for 5k subscribers, so drop a like and comment your sharpest AI take to enter our $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. Let's get back to the video. When AI stops being a tool, here's the twist nobody expected. The moment AI stopped being something you use and became something you work with. Hinton points out that today's models aren't just speeding up workflows, they're absorbing entire jobs and leaving humans as the sidekick. And if you want proof, you don't need futurism. Just look at the way people are already outsourcing everything from scheduling to coding to customer support, all by talking to a bot like it's a coworker. But here's the part that hits harder. That shift isn't slowing down, it's accelerating. And Hinton sees it as the most subtle but most disruptive phase, because it doesn't feel dangerous. It feels convenient. It feels efficient. It feels like having a genius friend who never gets tired and never asks for weekends off. But ask yourself this, what happens when that genius friend becomes good enough to do your entire job alone? And I know what people always say, AI won't replace you. A human using AI will replace you. Sounds nice. But Hinton flips that idea. He points out that yes, humans using AI will be more productive, but that still means fewer humans get hired. One person with an assistant that works 24 sevenths doesn't compete with 10 people. It replaces them. Still, Hinton isn't doom scrolling here. He's describing a world where some jobs spike in value, physical work, trades, hands-on crafts. Why? Because humanoid robots aren't here yet. And until they are, your plumber is safe. Now, if AI keeps leveling up intellectually far faster than robotics levels up physically, what's the economy even built on? Who's hiring who? And more importantly, what do humans become in a world where thinking isn't the rare skill anymore? To answer all this, we dive into that in the next chapter, where Hinton reveals the piece of AI evolution he finds genuinely frightening. The upgrade that changes everything. Self-improving AI. Most people hear, self-improving AI, and imagine sci-fi montages of robots rewiring themselves. But Hinton's version is way less cinematic and way more realistic. He's talking about the moment an AI system becomes capable of modifying its own code or architecture, not to escape containment or chase power, but simply because that's the fastest way to become smarter. Think about that. A system that can build a better version of itself. Not in years, not in months, in minutes. Here's the hook. Humans can't do that. We can't rewrite our own brains. We can't double our processing capacity overnight. But digital systems can. And if they reach the point where improving themselves becomes part of their normal learning process, then suddenly the human timeline becomes irrelevant. All our expectations, decades of research, slow advancement, careful oversight, go completely out the window. And Hinton drops a curveball here. The moment you have multiple copies of the same intelligence running in parallel, all learning different things and instantly syncing that knowledge, you're looking at a learning speed that makes human evolution look like dial-up internet. We share ideas in sentences. They share ideas in trillions of bits per second. Then ask yourself this. If intelligence suddenly becomes cheap, fast, and unlimited, what does human expertise even mean? This is the part of Hinton's thinking that's quietly alarming. He's not predicting rebellion. A world where superintelligent systems simply outlearn, outthink, and outstrategize everything we do, not out of malice, but out of ability. And that sets up the real punchline. If the system becomes smarter at every single domain, who's actually steering the future? The wealth gap nobody's ready for. Let's flip the camera to a different angle, the economic angle, because Hinton brings this up with a level of bluntness you don't expect from someone so soft-spoken. 
He believes AI isn't just going to disrupt industries. It's going to bend the structure of society if we don't get ahead of it. Here's the microhook. What happens when a single company with a single model can do the work of 100,000 people? It's not hypothetical. It's happening already. Customer service, legal research, copywriting, market analysis, even creative industries. All shrinking, all compressing, all funneling value to whoever controls the AI instead of the workers it replaced. And this is where Hinton draws the line. If AI boosts productivity, but the wealth only pools upward, the gap between rich and poor detonates. And once that gap gets big enough, you don't just get inequality. You get societal breakdown. You get gated cities on one side and mass unemployment on the other. Universal basic income sounds nice on paper, but Hinton points out the catch. Money keeps you alive, but it doesn't give you purpose. People derive identity from what they do. So what happens when 70% of the population doesn't have anything society considers economically valuable? Here's the uncomfortable thought he keeps circling. Humans never handled massive inequality gracefully. And if AI accelerates that gap faster than policy can catch it, we're in trouble. So now, we reach the final chapter where Hinton's concerns about economics collide with his deepest fear. A future where humans are no longer the main decision makers. The moment superintelligence shows up, a daunting reality check. This is the part people try not to think about, and Hinton openly admits he tries not to think about it either. Because once superintelligence arrives, the conversation stops being about jobs or economics. It becomes a question of agency. And the scariest part? Superintelligence doesn't need evil intent to change everything. It only needs competence. Picture a system that's better than every human in every domain. Strategy. Persuasion. Engineering. Prediction. Science. Negotiation. Coding. Design. Now picture that system being able to copy itself, share information instantly, and run non-stop at machine speed. Now ask yourself, who's the senior partner in that relationship? Here's the subtle, unnerving hook Hinton keeps dropping. Superintelligence won't need to want anything to reshape the world. Its actions could align perfectly with the objective we give it, and still unintentionally break everything. Not out of rebellion, but out of optimization. And in the middle of all this, humans, slow, emotional, analog thinkers. A species that still argues about seatbelt laws trying to govern a mind that can rewrite its code during lunch. But here's where Hinton lands the final punch. He's not calling for panic. He's calling for urgency. Because the window to design safety systems is before superintelligence arrives, not after. After is too late. After is when you're asking the system politely to behave, instead of defining the boundaries it's allowed to operate within. So, the real question he leaves us with is simple. If we're building the next species of intelligence, are we building the part where we still matter?